<laughs> My name is Anthony Patrick Maneri. I'm a photographer based out of Toronto. I'm the uh, founder and principal photographer for a project I've been working on for the past three years called Arrested Movement. I do commercial work as well. Uh, my name is Chloe C, and I am the co-founder of the Feminism Project. .com. I'm a journalist and an activist. My name is Theo Tams. I'm a singer-songwriter. Uh, I've been doing it, I guess, professionally around 10 years now. So my name is Peril Pandya, and I'm a community arts programmer and producer and educator. And who am I? I am someone who really desires to connect with people, and having hard conversations is important to me as well. I am Rex Harrington, and I was a principal dancer with the National Ballet of Canada for, God, 25 years. And I retired 15 years ago, and I became artist in residence. So I teach and coach at the National Ballet. Hi, my name is Ali J. Eisner. I am 45 years old. My birthday is May 13th, 1973. Uh, I work in children's television for the last 25 years. I've been an on-air puppeteer and a director and a producer and a writer. And I'm also a photographer. And I uh, recently have been directing lots of music videos. Uh, I'm a nature person. I'm an animal lover. I am transgender. I identify as non-binary. I also don't have boobs. Who am I? I am Carlos Fortin. And I am an actor for TV and film. Um, my name is Alexi Penno. I'm a visual and sculptural artist, and I want to make art for um, a lot of diverse queers uh, within Toronto and in Canada. So I am Ayele Lani, aka Witch Prophet. I am the uh, co founder of 88 Days of Fortune, now known as. Heart Lake Records. Started off as a collective to provide platforms for youth to perform and to just um, work on their artwork. Yeah. I'm also a singer songwriter. Hey, I'm Jordan Black, and I'm the uh, lead vocalist of Like Pacific, and yeah. Uh, being queer uh, doesn't really affect my craft. First of all, I don't identify with being queer. I identify with being gay. To me, queer is a derogatory term. Uh, it could be my age. Uh, I know a lot of people today embrace that term, but I don't. Um, I think it doesn't really affect my craft, being gay, but um, I would say the one positive thing that would come out of that would be that I'm way more open-minded. Uh, my queer identity obviously affects my uh, work, the work I put out, and it affects rather positively because it's part of my identity. I feel like I'm representing the community in all the work that I do, and it's important for other folks out there to see that representation in writing, on screen, um, within, the, within the heteronormative community. It makes that, it helps normalize the queer identity, and I think that just being queer being out and doing well results in a results in a really positive outlook for the masses. I think that being a queer artist has helped uh, in a positive way just because it kind of has forced me to be authentic and vulnerable and honest in a way that uh, maybe you know other artists who identify a different way don't have that same, uh, the same struggle and the same journey. So I think, uh, yeah, I think that, that it's just really kind of
kind of forced that that authenticity. Being queer as a dancer, I always felt like it freed me emotionally to connect deeper emotionally than some other people would feel sometimes. And it, it allowed me to express myself. And I never, I never had a big coming out or anything. I always just was who I was. So uh, it was a natural progression into the arts and dance. Um, well, I feel that my craft affects my art positively uh, by being able to make a bridge with other people through my art or a bridge to myself. So with other people, it would be putting out something that I am currently experiencing or something that I've experienced in the past, and perhaps they can see themselves reflected and not feel so alone, or perhaps they're learning about someone like me, which is really rad. So I think that that's all positive, learning and education. And if it's uh, positive for my own self, it's me reflecting on where I've been and uh, getting a better understanding of myself and then sharing it with everyone. Being queer affects my craft positively because it gives me a remembrance of honoring my journey and my own story as well as the journey and story of the other people around me. And I think I'm really drawn to thriving and being genuinely oneself um, and bringing that out of people in, around me. And I think that that's important when we understand our place in the community and our rightful place just as human beings to be accepted and loved and um, thought of as meaningful and important and a member of society that has a, a value and there's nothing wrong with us we're just fine the way we are you know it's like prescribed identities versus actually genuinely being yourself and I think that queer people have always fought for their place in a community and I feel a calling to do that as well so that really inspires me the people around me inspire me all the time to continue thinking of advocacy as part of you know um, my duty to society per se right like I think we all have to be responsible and um, you know try and change some of the lived experiences that we've had to be more positive for people in the future right there's always a margin of improvement in any community and I think queer people are resilient and strong and beautiful and it makes me proud to be queer. Being queer affects me positively in my scene because I'm in a very heteronormative scene and it's nice to have a voice among all the people that don't have a voice in our genre of music, so it's kind of cool to like be open and out there. So yeah, it's kind of nice to be, I guess, a role model for people who think I'm a role model, even though maybe sometimes I don't think I am. Okay, so being queer has affected my craft positively because um, it has allowed me to uh, share my authentic self in my music. Almost every one of my love songs is about my partner, Francesca. <laughs> Unless it's a breakup song, then it's about my ex or couple X's, um, but mostly um, it allows me to share um, who I am as a real person to my fans, um, and I feel like they appreciate that. Being queer has affected my craft positively in the sense that I am pretty much among my own people. The industry is full of us, <laughs> whether we like to admit it or not, um, and I think it's just I bring a sense of it. It's diversity, right? It's not. It's not always um, about straight people. So there's so many of us, and it's great to see so many of us out there performing and being our authentic selves. Being queer affects my craft positively in a way that I want to see um, more out there, more queer art, more um, accepting, kind of like. Uh, bodies and like different types of people out into the world into my craft and it does help lend to that that I just want to see more I guess visibility um, in my craft and I hope that comes across for me being queer as well I don't think being queer has hindered my uh, craft at all. Um, I, you know, being an artist, it has nothing to do with being queer. So um, it's just who I am authentically. It's what I do. So it's um, it, it's no not not positive or negative.
There have been moments when being queer has hindered my craft. My mother was always concerned that I'd be pigeonholing myself by being honest about my identity. Um, so sometimes you get bucketed in the, the queer perspective when it could just be like an objective thought on something. And so sometimes people use that, but as a visible minority, usually it's the Asian thing that gets people first before the, before the gay. Uh, I think that being queer has been a hindrance because it's the music industry. And uh, I find myself having to sometimes fight for the most simple things. You know, there's a song on my record called Romeo and James. And to get that on the album was like pulling teeth with certain individuals. So I think that uh, it's just part and parcel of being a queer artist is that if we really want to be heard and have the presence, I think that it's a lot of knocking down doors and just not taking no for an answer and, and trusting, trusting your art enough that it's worth it to knock down those doors. Has being queer hindered my craft? Um, no, because it's almost the opposite. Like boys get teased going into dance. So I, and I never had any of that either. I, my mother wanted me to dance. I didn't want to dance and I just went into dance and you know, it sort of worked out. So no, it never really, if anything, I think it might've been an asset. Has being queer hindered my craft at all? I would say at 45, the answer is no. Um, I feel it did hinder my craft before I came out. Uh, before I was 21, I was actually on air as an on-air kids TV host. And I wasn't out then and relating to the kids at home. And, and I wasn't out, so I wasn't being my authentic true self. But as soon as I came out when I was 21, uh, my queerness just <laughs> exploded. And it's, it's only been um, a beautiful experience ever since. So no, it has not hindered my craft. Being queer has enabled my craft. It definitely hasn't hindered my craft for sure. Um, in my self-identity, I feel like queerness is where I found myself. I felt that there were many things that I could relate to, but there were many things I couldn't do. And being queer felt a com like a comfortable place for me to identify myself. And, um, you know, and I felt that way since I was in my early 20s. And I continue to feel that well, you know, in terms of a relationship, a relationship with an identity as well. Um, I think it really speaks volumes. I'm really just about um, you know, being able to create spaces where we can appreciate each other's similarities, but appreciate each other's differences as well. So um, being queer hasn't necessarily hindered my craft per se, but it's hindered my networks to a point where um, when I first came out, I had a, a lot of people uh, um, who I was rolling within the straight community who didn't understand as uh, like being a black woman in hip hop and in, in R&B, it was like a weird thing for me to be promoting very openly my queerness. So I lost a lot of networks in that aspect, but obviously like that was in 2009 and a lot of those people have grown um, and changed their mindset. And so has the scene um, like am amazingly um, changed. And I think definitely um, it hindered it in, for a moment, and um, but that's because of the way the world is and people's mindsets, and, and those things can change, so it was good. I think being queer has hindered my craft a little bit. I mean, at times, like I said, in like a very heterosexual scene, it's hard, you know, because a lot of people don't want to give you the chance. They don't want to talk to you. They can't relate to you, so they don't want to listen to your lyrics. They don't want to listen to your music because they're like, well, he's just talking about men all the time, and that's not necessarily the case. Uh, even if I am, it's not like I'm, uh, for the most part, it's all gender neutral, I'm not going to talk about like, you know, he ruined my life, this, that. It's like, it's, uh, it's not, it's, that's corny. So I'm not going to do that. But, you know, I do find that uh, maybe we won't be as big or won't get as big because, because I am gay. And, you know, a lot of people aren't just aren't willing to, ready, they're not ready to have a pop punk vocalist yet that is open. I think that in the start of my career, it was always, uh, you can't let people know that you're gay. Because once people know that you're gay, suddenly you're typecast. I'll never be able to play a straight character. Everyone's always going to think that I'm gay. So it was always that kind of fear, I want to say, that I was going to be put only in gay roles. But it never really manifested. I've always been out and open, and nothing has ever happened 
like, I don't know. I guess it's just my, my physicality itself. <laughs> Being queer has hindered my craft in a way that I, I guess I internalized my questions about my art. I was like, is this too queer or is this too gay? Am I pushing something that's not a lot of people are going to like understand or um, accept? And that is just like a negative thought that happens a lot in the process when which you kind of just have to like push through and ignore it but it it happens in your brain and you kind of just have to like throw it aside but I feel like a lot of people go through that um, so I don't know the voices in your head are I think where I think I need to that's where that comes in <laughs> Uh, my advice to uh, gay photographers um, out there would just be be yourself. I mean, you have the ability, depending on where you are, know your know your situation, know your environment. You could turn it up, and you could turn it down. Um, but uh, just be yourself. If I had to give advice to other queer artists, I think the best I would be able to offer is to be yourself. I know it sounds super cliche and cheesy, but essentially being comfortable with who you are empowers you with the confidence to take on any kind of project, activity, industry, institution, whatever it may be. But I think that honesty with yourself really translates to the work and end product. And you need that kind of representation, especially if you're aiming to normalize queer identities in the in the world, in the media, in whatever you, you might be doing. Um, I think it's a super important thing to be at ease with who you are. Uh, I think my advice would be uh, two things. Recognize um, that your art is just, it's, it's more than a career path. It's more than, uh, you know, the daily grind, it's your purpose. You know, that's why you're here is to create. Uh, and I think the other thing is just persist like a motherfucker. Just uh, keep going uh, and persist the hardest on the days that you want to give up. I think that would be it. If I was going to give any advice to young dancers or people wanting to dance, it would be that you have to commit 100% to what you're doing because it's a very short career and you don't have a lot of time and you have to decide do you want to be a big fish in a little pond or a little fish in a big pond depending on where you dance and I find I talk to a lot of the young dancers now who get so upset being in a big company I said well go to Europe go here go explore there's you know if I was younger and had to do it again I probably would have had my career in Europe because there's so many companies but I was such a I afraid to travel and go and branch out. I mean, it worked out for me in Canada, obviously. But uh, yeah, I would just say you have to commit 100% or don't do it. My advice to queer artists like myself, well, in that question, queer artists, but no one is as like me. And you are you. Uh, so I would say stay authentic to yourself, stay authentic to your craft and what you believe in and what your vision is. Deep as dig as you can uh, through all your memories and your experiences and share those as authentically as you can. Stay gold, stay strong, take no shit, and be kind. My advice to creative artists, folk out there, is um, be true to your journey. I mean, it's, it's really something that I, I think that artists, you know, sometimes take for granted as they're given this opportunity and it's beautiful and it deserves to be expressed. So, um, you know, sometimes the world and doesn't value that, but always value your perspective. Um, so my advice for artists like myself um, or anybody really who needs advice in the music industry is to be very organized, write everything down. Um, check every single granting website, um, get your business intact, especially if you're doing everything yourself, which is what I'm doing. Um, knowing the business side of the music is incredibly important. Signing up for SoCan, 
um, approaching Toronto Arts Council, Ontario Arts Council, Canada Council, um, Art Reach, any of those programs and really trying to get money and trying to figure out how to get money and to connect with people. I'd also suggest going to every single event that you possibly can because the more people see you, the more they remember you and the more likely um, they'll be able to support you in your endeavors if they see you supporting them in theirs. What is my advice to queer artists? Well, training. Lots and lots of training. You need to study. You need to go to school. You need to be able to build your craft, hone your craft. It's not just about, I'm an actor. No, you have to be a properly trained actor. Otherwise, you'll never get anywhere. People do look at education. It does count. Not to say that you have to go to college for six years or university, but you do have to have some fundamental training. Without it, you won't be able to move ahead because people will not take you seriously. My advice to other queer artists, young queer artists, would be um, be surrounded by the people that love you and support your craft and your creativity because that will definitely help you grow as an artist and just keep making as much work, even if it's bad work or terrible work. Like you're queer, and like as long as you make your work visible, um, it's it's valid, um, and it's worth people seeing your creativity and your worth. The advice I'd give to someone who's in the same shoes as me, whether being like a gay vocalist or a queer artist of some sort, is just to kind of maintain your integrity and and stick to what you actually believe in. Like don't water yourself down just because you know the scene is way different than you like I've spent so much time like half of touring is mostly with straight people and that's completely fine it's a different environment but like you kind of just have to be yourself and stand out in that way because you want to be heard you want to be different but you still want to you know, obviously fit in but don't go lengths to not fit in you know what I mean just do exactly what you're doing